Hey, everybody. I'm Judith McGill with DataBank, and I was just chatting with Mark Haupt right here. He's our Chief Information Security Officer, and I found what he was saying to be so interesting. I wanted to stop him and capture this on video and share this with all of you. So what we were talking about was the security of tomorrow, and is it zero trust? So my first question to you, Mark, going back to our conversation, yep. you and I were talking about using time-tested approaches to protecting data. Right. The bad players keep getting more skilled and the question just doesn't go away. Are there any new security approaches being deployed? Well, there's always new security approaches being deployed, but the the reality is, and you know, one of the things that we found during COVID was that whenever you're doing the basic hygienic aspects of security, so when you're patching on a regular basis, when you're making sure that your firewall rules are locked down to just what you need, not only ingress, in other words, inbound, but also egress going outbound, you have a much greater chance of survival in this cyber attack, cybersecurity world that we live in. So hygiene is something that has been a, uh, is something that we've evangelized in the security world for years, that we've tried to get the systems administrators, the network administrators and everybody just to to, to do that, that type of function, uh, just to buckle down and do the basics, you know, but there's always new techniques, you know, just like sports, okay? In basketball, when your team is failing, what do you do? You go back to the very basics. We learn how to dribble the ball again one of my favorite movies is Hoosiers the coach comes in brand new you know brand new off the off the field so to speak his team thinks they're hot stuff he takes them all the way back to the basics and teaches them how to dribble again well that's what the hygiene aspect is but as you build up in that you know and you get into that routine of the hygiene then you have to start looking at hey what's next out there and so there's a lot of different factors out there of what's next. There's um, some some of the terms are that, that are used that are out there are just, you know, marketing terms, if you will, for things that we've been doing for forever. Um, and then there are some some legitimate new things out there. Artificial intelligence is changing the way that we operate uh, in not only in security, but about security. And yeah. so we're using artificial intelligence and we're using those types of things in order to sift through all the logs and different things that are going on. But at the same time, um, you know, artificial intelligence is a challenge that we're dealing with in security. I was just in a conference this week where a lot of companies are just blocking um, right now because artificial intelligence, the, the chat GPT, the, the co-pilot and different things like that are just running so fast and so far ahead of us that we don't know what data we're giving and putting into those systems. And so we have to take that step back. But, you know, a lot of these a lot of these new things that you hear out there, like zero trust, for example, are just reiterations of basic hygienic tools, or maybe little amped up uh, type of type of scenarios. That's actually my next question. Okay. Uh, so th about zero trust. So mm. I'm on the marketing team, you know, and mm. we're just often asked by members of the press about zero trust network access ztna and in right. fact very recently as you know you've been quoted in the press about this so yes. for our listeners who don't uh really know what this is can you explain what it is and then give me your take on it positive sure behavior? absolutely so let's kind of take a step back and let's break this down into what we call parsing down what ZT, zero trust, and then NA, the network access, okay? So the whole concept of zero trust, first of all, you know, going back to my comments a moment ago about, you know, basics and hygienics, zero trust came out of a Forrester research project um, in about 2010 timeframe. But prior to that, we called zero trust least privilege or the concept of least privilege. In other words, you give the least amount of access as possible to the individuals that need it in order to accomplish their job. Beyond that, we don't give extra access. And we've always rubbed, you know, security people have always rubbed into the business um, on that because the business wants as much access as they could possibly get because it might allow them, you know, to see things and see things in a different way that they, that they had not seen that, you know, before. So for example, in the financial world, we have, 
um, what we call either two person integrity or, or separation of duties. And so, you know, one person cannot execute an entire transaction. And in fact, it's gotten ever, ever since Sarbanes-Oxley, it's gotten to the point of one person can't even see the entire financials. And mm. that has that that's least privilege. In other words, um, you know, Judith, if you're if you're in finance, I'm only going to give you the accounts payable piece if you can't see um, another, you know, another piece of it. So, so, the you know, the receivables, for example, you can't see how much money's coming in. You can only see how much money's going out, you know, type of thing. So that's a that's the concept of least or at least privilege before zero trust came into play in 2010. Then in about 2014, 2015 timeframe, now we're moving over to the NA part, the network access. Um, a, a couple of vendors, one in particular Zscaler, came up with this concept of using zero trust and layering on network access. In other words, uh, that term is nothing more than what we used to call compartmentalization. In other words, we would create compartments. We would create little, lot. Uh, we would call um, logical boxes. Um, in, in fact, in uh, in the networking world before that, it was called VLANs or virtual lo local area networks, where you would set it up so that if you attach to like the guest wireless network on a on a corporate network, you could only get to essentially the internet and maybe an intranet page that allowed you to see about the company. Whereas if you signed into the um, the the employee network on the on that Wi-Fi, you may be able to get to a whole series of applications. What Zero Trust did is it it turned around and said, look, you know, we're going to take compartmentalization and we're going to take it to the next level and say nobody gets any access. You're completely out. We assume that you're a bad person or, or an attacker coming in, <clears throat> not a bad person, just an attacker coming in until you pass our gates and our gateways. And then once you meet certain criteria, you can be granted access to, you know, various little things along the way. So that's, that's the kind of, I'm sorry. Sounds really imposing. Yes, it does. But it's, it's, it's a concept that is, again, taking that least privilege or, or taking the compartmentalization and putting some modern day tweaks on it and some marketing language to it uh, to, to make it sound new, to make it sound exciting and make it sound something that um, <clears throat> that is is good for a business and important for a business. And quite frankly, it is good for a business. We should be doing compartmentalization. We should be doing least privilege. We should be doing that all the time. My only qualm with ztna is the zero trust piece the, what we say that you know one of the things that security people have as a challenge is always that we're being viewed as the the, the department of no or yeah. the de department of, of i'm always going to challenge you and come up with reasons why you can't do something yeah. and zero trust just kind of elevates that a little bit to now marketing. I'm now actually marketing that Judith, I don't trust you and I'm not going to let you do anything on my network until I say you can and, and how you can. Well, I, I prefer, I, you know, again, least privilege compartmentalization. I'm a hundred percent for, I just prefer that we call it something a little bit more gentle, something yeah. more, um, more inviting to say, you know, the security people are actually wanting to be a part of the business and wanting to be a part of the, the you know, at the table, having a say and having a conversation with folks like yourself. I don't want to block you from getting yeah. to some place you need. I want to be able to be a partner with you. And if I come in and tell you, Judith, that I don't trust you from the very outset, how does it make you feel? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. It in the time I've worked with you, I appreciate that you, it's not just the message, but how mm -hmm. the message is going to be communicated. So he, what I'm hearing you say is that the spirit of how you approach network security actually influences those technical protocols that you put in place. Absolutely. And that's what makes them powerful. Absolutely. We need compartmentalization. We need to say, hey, um, you know, Judith, you're in marketing. We love what you do. We care. We care about what you do, but you really don't need to have access to even access to the server that hosts our financial data. Right. You, you just don't. You don't need that. So we're we're just yeah. gonna we're gonna have a path for you that makes you successful, and we're also gonna have a path for the company that protects the company. And that's really the concept of ZTNA compartmentalization, least privilege. And and that's you know, I guess the, the best way to boil it down to is words matter. 
and words matter. You know, wor words, words matter. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, how, how we communicate that and how we, how we operate in that uh, yeah. does matter as well. So it almost sounds like um, zero trust using those words uh, as something new, because maybe mm -hmm. it's not so new. Uh, it almost sounds like you're being lulled into a false sense of security, just follow zero, zero trust network access and, yeah. And isn't being lulled into a false sense of security exactly what the bad guys are counting on? Absolutely, and that's one of the that, that's one of the problems with anything that that we do is to we don't want people to be lulled into that false sense of security because the bad guys are constantly it's, it's a cat and mouse game between us and the bad guys and and when we say bad guys we have to define there's really three levels of bad guys out there um, there's the what we call the script kiddies they're the they're the people are having fun or just getting into the scenario. You know, it's, it's pretty easy, you know, with the hygienic pieces and least privilege and compartmentalization, it's pretty easy to keep those people out. Okay. Um, then there, then there's the, the next level up, if you will, the moderate um, type of hackers, people that maybe have uh, are part of it, aff loosely affiliated with groups, but then you have the advanced persistent threat people. And so, you know, the APTs or the advanced persistent threats could either be nation states or they could be people who are um, financially and otherwise you know, in business, essentially, to conduct bad things against organizations like Databank in order to gain financially or, or gain something, usually financially, uh, from us. So, you know, coming coming back around, you know, we, you know, ZTNA, yeah, it, you know, again, compartmentalization, it it has a, an incredible effect on the ability of all three of those levels of people to get in uh, or not get into our environment. And if they did get in to hold them within a blast chamber. In other words, if if you know, if you if you're effectively keeping down the uh, the script kiddies and even the mid level loosely aligned people. But hey, you know, most companies are most companies are not going to be able to fully defend against the APTs, maybe some of them, not all of them. But, you know, at that level, we then say, hey, um, the, the blast, the effect of what they can do if they were to get into that. Um, I want to limit that to as as little as possible. And that's really where ZTNA compartmentalization, least privilege uh, can, can help us out is if we create a blast chamber using ZTNA or using virtual lands or whatever other security protocols we want to call it into this, just this little space, then the rest of the company can be safe. But we don't want to lull our entire company into believing that they are safe just because we've created all these little blast chambers. Um, because keep in mind, the size of the blast matters as well. Right. You know, if you, if the blast goes off, if you will, and it spills over into other chambers and other chambers, you know, just go back to the, uh, the wreck of the Titanic. They had a, they had a hole in, in a compartment on a ship, but they didn't build the walls or the bulkheads high enough. So as the ship went down, the water went over the top of the bulkheads and then took I the next one, know. took the next one, the next one. That's how the Titanic went down. You know, the supposed unsinkable ship that is lulling people into belief, but there's always a weakness somewhere. Just that weakness is the part where, you know, you have to be aware of it and, and what's going on. So for example, in a ZTNA type of environment, where would our weakness be? If we created a blast chamber that had, let's say we had a server sitting there that's web accessible, there probably has to be a hole punched in another firewall or punched in the in the wall somewhere, if you will, that allows that server to go back and talk to a database. OK, that's your weakness. That's the bulkhead where the water is going to come through. Yeah. So yeah. when that blast goes off, when that ransomware goes off inside of that space on that web server, it's going to pop right through that that hole. And then all of a sudden now the blast has impacted the database server on the other side. So we have to create multiple layers of security. Another hygienic piece is multi-layer security that we've been talking about for 30 or 40 years um, in order to help, help either stop or limit that punched hole into the next compartment and alert us to the fact that it's going on so we can shut down all of the holes that exist in order for business to operate so that we can contain the blast um, to where it's at. So that's a long-winded answer about 
you know, we don't want to lull people to sleep, but at the same time, want to have that security in place. You know, Mark, as you're talking, it just strikes me that we go back to the beginning of where we started here is that the basics matter. And mm -hmm. what's new, what I'm hearing you say, it. what is new is you just have to stay on top of that, create mm -hmm. alerts and constantly be monitoring every single aspect right. of your security. I'm, my Here's my, my analogy as I'm thinking about this. So I'm from Chicago originally. Mm -hmm. We used to watch the Comsom TV and Lou Boudreau was WGN. our- WGN. WGN, Lou Boudreau would uh, watch some player doing some kind of a hot dog play and he'd blow it and he'd go, okay, now you young ball players out there, you want see what happened there? You got to go back to the basics and play mm -hmm. fundamental baseball. And that's what I'm hearing you say, Mark, you got to play fundamental network security. You always have to play the fundamentals and you can layer the, the for lack of better term, the new sexy stuff on top of that. Yeah. that those fundamentals you know if you want to if you want to go out on the field and you do that little flip out the second base or third base or whatever um do it in between the innings but once the inning starts you better be focused on where that ball is where that bat is and where that pitcher is all the time gotcha okay excellent mark always love chatting with you um i i always learn something and i always feel better for data bank and and for our clients knowing uh, that you're in the driver's seat. Well, thank you. It's good to speak to you again. All right. Have a great day. All right.